thank you for having me in Ghana, the uh, country that led liberation. I feel inspired being in Ghana. Now, we're talking about um, the fourth industrial revolution. Is Africa at the crossroads? What do we want as Africans? We want shared economic prosperity. When we say African, it's Africa and its diaspora. Africans in America, Africans in the Caribbean, Africans in Brazil, Africans on the continent. We are the same people. All people of African descent are the same people. And we are saying what we want. We want shared economic growth. And the pillars that will make us achieve that are continental integration and political unity as one. And then the fourth industrial revolution and the third pillar is innovation in entrepreneurship. We are talking about 21st century Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism driven by technology. Pan-Africanism driven by the fourth industrial revolution and Pan-Africanism driven by innovation and entrepreneurship. That is the African dream that we seek beyond politics, beyond rhetoric. We want inclusive economic growth. We want shared economic prosperity. That's our Pan-African vision as Africans. What do we mean by the fourth industrial revolution? It's a global, all-embracing technology transformation which will affect the way individuals, the way institutions, the way communities do their business. The scale, the scope, and speed of the changes is why it is a revolution. There are new technologies that are fusing physical, digital, and biological worlds, impacting all disciplines, economics, engineering, industries. It is redefining the very meaning of humanity. That's what we mean by the fourth industrial revolution. In terms of background, the first one was about water and steam power from 1760 to 1870. Then the second one was electric power to create mass production from 1870 to 1965. Then the third revolution was from 65 to 2011. The fourth industrial revolution is said to be having started around 2011 going forward. Now, as Africans, where were we in these revolutions? You can see slavery from 1619 to 1865. So during the first industrial revolution, we are in chains, we are enslaved. And also colonialism, 1884 to 1994. So during the first, second, and third, the African was not a full player. In, in the first case, we were enslaved. In the second case, we are under colonialism. And even now, Krumah would argue that we are actually under neocolonialism. What we're saying right now is, why can't we as Africans somehow take advantage of the fourth industrial revolution so that we are players and not objects? We are players and not victims. Technology is a tool. If you're not careful, we will be victims. If you're not careful, we will be tools, we will be objects of the revolution, as was the case between one, two, and three. So the fourth industrial revolution is building on the third, and it's fusing technologies that are blurring physical, digital, and biological systems. Why do we call it a revolution? The velocity of the changes. Why do we call it a revolution? The scope of the changes. Why do we call it a revolution? The system's impact of the revolution. The major growth of artificial intelligence and its extensive deployment in e-commerce means that it has changed the way we do business as individual institutions and affects all disciplines. That's why it's called a revolution. I'll just share with you a few definitions without detail, so you have a sense of what we're talking about when we talk about this revolution. Artificial intelligence is intelligence programmed into a machine, demonstrated by machines, in contrast to natural intelligence manifested by human beings and other animals. If you can make a machine do things that we normally ascribe to human beings, then we have artificial intelligence, okay? Artificial general intelligence. Now, this is where we build a machine that has general intelligence, not just particular intelligence, but general intelligence. 
intelligence of a machine that has capacity to understand and learn any intellectual task that a human being can do. It is the primary goal of artificial intelligence research. This is work in progress. It's one thing to build a machine that does one particular job, quite another to build a machine that has general artificial intelligence. Machine learning, the start of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems are used to effectively perform tasks without using explicit instructions, but rather relying on patterns and inference. Just to give you a sense of the jargon of the fourth industrial revolution, we talk about deep learning, which is part of the broader family of machine intelligence and learning data representation. But you can look at this later on, but I want you to know what is driving the revolution. Robotics, the intelligent connection of perception to action. When you put your hand on a hot stove, what happens? When you put your hand on the stove, the sensors in your hand will feel the heat and send a signal to your brain. Your brain will make a decision and make a communication with your muscles to remove your arm. So sensors, a brain, and an actuator. Three things. If you can have sensation to understand what is going on, if you can have a brain to make a decision, and then the actuator to bring motion, you have a robot. Three things, sensors, a brain, and actuator. Intelligent connection of perception to action, that is robotics. The design, construction of machines that do things that we normally ascribe to human beings. That is a key driver of the revolution. Mechatronics, the synergistic integration of mechanics, electronics, and computer science to produce optimal products. So a robot becomes a specific mechatronic product. Your uh, rocket, your plane is a mechatronic product. What we're emphasizing is that one plus one is go to three. One plus one is go to five. The combination of mechanics, electronics, and computer science synergistically will produce a product which is much stronger than the addition of the two fields. So in terms of field, you find mechatronics right in the middle there, where you have all these things, and you have mechatronics sitting right in the middle. These are the drivers. This is the framework that is driving the fourth industrial revolution. What are the key drivers? Artificial intelligence, intelligent algorithms, augmented reality, human augmentation. This one here is what we call human 2.0. Okay, what we're trying to do there is to combine the machine and the human being to improve performance. So the human being does not have to be replaced. We just create a new one, which we call human 2.0. The combination of artificial intelligence and human intelligence. Big data, internet of things, internet of everything, nanotechnology, autonomous vehicles, drones, driverless cars. These are the drivers of the fourth industrial revolution. 3D printing, biotechnology, material science, renewable energy, energy storage, robotics and mechatronics, quantum computing, cloud computing, blockchain technologies, revolution in e-commerce, medicine and media. Now, the question to you as an African is, how can we use this high science to solve our problems? How can we use this high science to drive economic prosperity, to drive economic growth for the African on the continent and the African in the diaspora? Don't tell me this is for Japan or America or Europe. No, if you are clever, if you are innovative, if you are entrepreneurial as an African, you can make sure these drive the African continent. It can be done. We just need to be creative. We just need to make sure that we understand the idea of leapfrogging. Think about Mupesa. Think about Echo Cash. There's nothing in America, there's nothing in Japan that is as good as Mupesa. There's nothing in America that is as good as Echo Cash. You know why? Because in America there are so many banks. There are so many banks in London, in Tokyo. Whereas 80% of our people in Africa have no access to brick and mortar banking. So mobile banking becomes the solution. So our poverty, our lack of infrastructure can be an opportunity to leverage high science.
high technology. Why? That's why we have this session called Innovation this afternoon. Think out of the box. How can we use nanotechnology? How can we use energy storage? How can you use big data? How can we use blockchain technologies to address matters of HIV AIDS, to address matters of poverty, to address matters of economic prosperity on the continent? That is the agenda. Remember, technology is only a tool. You can use it to destroy or to build. You can use it to empower yourself or to enslave other people. The African has a choice. Yes, Africa is at a crossroads. Now, it can be business as usual if we as Africans are going to engage the fourth industrial revolution. We go to do things completely differently. We how to think as opposed to what to think. So the way we teach in Ghana must change. The way we teach in Africa must change. The way we learn must change. We need to empower our students with problem-solving skills. We need structured thinking. We need blended learning. We need interdisciplinary approaches. Renaissance man, Renaissance woman. Don't tell me I'm a superstar lawyer. Don't tell me I'm a superstar doctor. We want a doctor who understands philosophy, a doctor who understands politics, a doctor who knows the Bible, a Renaissance woman, a Renaissance man. We want a lawyer who is conversant with high technology, a lawyer who is clear on ideology, a lawyer who understands biology. Only such kind of a Renaissance man, Renaissance woman, will survive under globalization and be able to drive the African agenda using high science and high technology. Ecosystem thinking, emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence, existential intelligence, spiritual intelligence. I hope in Ghana you are handling all these types of intelligence. Spiritual intelligence, cultural intelligence. We need to move away in terms of education to what we call acquisition of key competencies as opposed to traditional education. What do you know? Show me what you can do. What competencies do you have? Don't show me your MBA from Harvard or your PhD from MIT. What can you do? What are your skills? What are your key competencies? That's how we're going to be bowlers and short callers within the fourth industrial revolution as Africans. Judgment, negotiation, cognitive capacity, flexibility, knowledge production, knowledge management, intellectual property, and of course, writing, documentation. Africans must be key players in knowledge production. Africans must be key players in documentation of knowledge. Don't just be consumers. When we produce knowledge, then we can become clear drivers of this revolution. In the first two revolutions, three revolutions, Africans were ob about blockchain technologies, about the Internet of Things, with respect to addressing our challenges, our programs as Africans. Yes, Africa is at a crossroads, a crossroads which requires decisive action in terms of using technology to solve our agenda. So understand the idea of leapfrogging. So as we do the innovation today in this session, let us understand how we can actually jump from all technologies to the brightest technology by using the notion of leapfrogging. Policies required, implementation, so that we can move. Sometimes some of these high technologies are easier to apply, cheaper to apply, and more effective on the continent because of our poverty, because of our lack of infrastructure. We just need to be creative and innovative in terms of how we embrace this. So lack of development and poor infrastructure means there are less sunk costs and all the technology constraints to consider. Absence of the legacy challenges allows us to leapfrog. So the notion of leapfrogging is the key driver of our game. We must start with coding. Coding, for example, if you think about it, artificial intelligence is the DNA of the fourth industrial revolution. Coding is the oxygen that drives the fourth industrial revolution. If you can't code, 
If you can't create computer solutions, you can't be a player in this revolution. Coding is everything. Artificial intelligence is everything. So why, as Africans, can we not start with coding and see how we can empower ourselves? Without coding, there's no fourth industrial revolution. And how can we empower the young girls in Africa by empowering them uh, in terms of coding? Remember, the empowerment of young girls, of women, is smart economics. Empowerment of girls is smart economics. We are saying, how can we use coding as an example of what we can do, just teaching young girls in Africa how to code? It's a starting point in terms of coding. And empowerment of girls is smarter economics. So coding is a way of starting about this. And what is coding? We must understand what a computer program is. We must understand what coding is. Thinking, thinking like a computer scientist. When you have a problem, when you are a computer scientist, you say, how can I write a computer program to solve this problem? This problem. Programming is a broader discipline, whereas coding is a narrower one. So coding, and I hope we'll talk about this later on in the discussion, is one entry point, in particular, young girls in Africa uh, getting on the coding agenda. Understanding the whole coding issues, we can discuss this later on. And the, the languages, C, C+, Visual C, Assembly Language, Occam, uh, Patterson, and all that, server-side coding. Let us have a sense, this is the advantage of the fourth industrial revolution. All you need is a brain and a device. All you need is a, is, a, is, a, is a brain and connectivity. So in a village in Africa, without a toilet, without drinkable water, you can be on the internet getting notes from Harvard and MIT. Can you imagine that? Through solar power, through connectivity, you can get a toilet without drinkable water. So why don't we leapfrog and be able to go through this as a driver of our agenda? Now, as I emphasize the fourth industrial revolution, we must understand that Jap uh, Botswana won't do it as Botswana, Nigeria won't do it as Nigeria, we must think about continental integration as the framework. We must think about regional competitiveness, regional attractiveness, continental competitiveness and continental attractiveness. We are moving away from national competitiveness to talk about regional competitiveness. An investor in Japan, an investor in New York will not come to Ghana if Nigeria is not attractive. We don't come to South Africa if Botswana is not, is not attractive. They will think about the region. How is ECOWAS? How is SADAC? How is the Af East African community? How is the African continent? So we need to think in terms of the continent as our unit of analysis. The continent is the only viable unity of analysis. Okay? The content is the only viable framework in which Africa can embrace the fourth industrial revolution. We can't embrace the small little countries. Economies of scale, political unity, a huge resource base, and then scale, and human capital, and the collective GDP. This is what will allow us to move in the fourth industrial revolution. Sadak GDP, $12 billion. Population, 30 million people. South Africa, 50 million. These are the numbers that make sense. SADAC, 280 million people. GDP, $600 billion. Now we are talking. The regional free trade, 2 billion people. GDP, $2.6 trillion. America, 325 million people. GDP, $19 trillion. These are economies. Little, 1.2 billion Africans, and I have a GDP of $2.5 trillion behind me. The Chinese will listen to you out of economics, not out of love. The Indians will listen out of economics and not love. The Americans will engage you, not out of love, out of economics. These are the numbers. This is the framework of the fourth industrial revolution. 1.2 billion Africans with one voice. A people with $2.5 trillion GDP can unlock value for the continent, for the Africans and the African diaspora. Krumah was a way ahead of his time. You know what Krumah said? Let us not get used to our little nations who will not unite. Let's move quickly. 
and Nyerere and them said, no, let's do brick by brick. Guess what? You know what the problem is here? When we unite, when we succeed and have the United States of Africa, there will be one president in Africa. There will be no president in Ghana. Ado, are you ready, Mahama? Are you ready to be a minister of agriculture for Africa? He's not ready. Ado, he's not ready. Mahama is not ready. Buhari is not ready to be minister of the police. <laughs> Kagami does not want to be a minister of the youth. There is no such thing as a free lunch. If we are going to be able to get the United States of Africa, you must give up on elements of national sovereignty. Give up on your petty personal ambitions so that we can work together as one continent. As Buhari, Kagami, Mnangaga, Siro Ramaphosa are not ready to be governors, to be ministers. They want to be president of starving people. Shame on you, African president. That's why Krumah, Krumah had seen this. To the African unity, to the African bloc. Why can't we as Africans have one leader? What's so special about us? Other successful economies have one leader. South Africa is meaningless unless it is linked to the prosperity of the rest of the African continent. Can Zuma say that? Can Ramaphosa say that? The prosperity of Nigeria is meaningless. Oh, probation. Shame on you, Obama. Shame on you, Oprah Winfrey. No one will respect you. You know, I used to go to the World Economic Forum and I used to talk a lot. And they say, hey, we like what you're saying. Where are you from? Then I refuse to answer. I keep talking. No, 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 no. We agree with you, but where are you from? I'm coming out of MIT. No, no, no. We mean your country. If you're that smart, how come there's cholera in your own If you're that smart, how come your elections are rigged? So my superstardom, my rock star status, was undermined by the poverty and dis, uh, di, di, disasters in my own country. So you as an African, it doesn't matter who you are, CEO, ambassador, rock star, you are nothing. Unless and until every African is a superstar. If you like informative and educational videos on Africa, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos.